And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to O'Neill's Grill for our weekly fan and press luncheon with JMU head football coach Everett Withers as the journey continues for the JMU football Dukes. After Saturday's 59 to 27 win over the Phoenix of Elon, the Dukes have received an at-large bid into the 2014 football championship subdivision tournament field. And so coach Withers, we now can start talking the P word. We can talk about the playoffs yeah. as the Dukes are certainly bound for uh, the NCAA tournament. And, and coach, first of all, I know that you want to go through week in and week out and just prepare yourself and get better and better. Um, was playoffs ever a goal that you set or was it just a matter of the result of those many goals week in and week out? Well, I think, Kurt, if you go back and, you know, we talked about events, you know, each week is an event, uh, each uh, game's an event, and then the responses to those events. And if you have the proper response to an event, uh, uh, usually the outcome is like you like it. So each week was an event. So the, the end of this deal had nothing to do with playoffs. It had to be, you know, about uh, uh, conquering events. And uh, we're at that point in time now. We won nine of those events. I uh, had the proper response to nine events, so uh, uh, that uh, obviously gets you an opportunity to play uh, at least one more game. How does this compare to going into a, a football tournament, a 24-team field, uh, as compared to what they do at the football bowl subdivision where you're going to a bowl game? Well, uh, it's, it's amazing that you asked that question. Uh, you know, with, with FBS going that way now with four teams, uh, I, I think they've kind of realized what FCS has, uh, you know, realized a long time is this is the best way to do it is to pick a field of, uh, of teams, you know, whatever that field may be, 24 in this case, uh, and, and let it be decided on the field. Uh, ironically, with, with school being out this week, our week of preparation is going to be a lot like a bowl week uh, because of no school. So, uh, we, you know, when I leave here, we'll go – We'll go practice here in about uh, an hour and a half. So um, it's kind of kind of unique that that you know that FBS is just now getting to this format. Uh, so, but it's it's a good way to do it. Yeah, if you go back to five weeks into the season when the Dukes were two and three, you didn't have a chance in the bowl system to really win a national championship, right. and now you do. Well, yeah, and, and again, that gives you the opportunity to to continue to play, uh, and, and it's all about wins. Uh, you know, I really don't in FCS ball. I really, we really didn't look at polls all year long. We didn't look at you know which poll mattered over you know the other poll. We just knew if we just kept winning, we'd have an opportunity at the end of the year to possibly have the chance to play one more game. In the post game on Saturday, you mentioned about focus, near nearsighted focus for your team yeah. being myopic. But in, yeah. in being myopic, all you're also far-sighted and looking back to uh, what happened to your team, what happens as you went through each event this season and, and learning as you do go forward and, and hone in on your focus? Well, that's, that's part of growing. Uh, I think you have to look back and take, you know, the good and the bad and learn from it. And we have done that. Uh, but we don't. We try not to look back behind us too much. We try to look ahead and, and look at what, what's right in front of us. And that's, I think our team has done a good job of uh, uh, learning that throughout this season. And I think that's been one of the, the positive the, the bright spots of our team, learning how to look at and focus what's ahead of us. How do you think your team handled the senior day, the emotions of what could be really over the top or kind of yeah. subduing on a senior day event? I thought they handled it really well. Uh, I thought our seniors, uh, we had 17 uh, seniors that uh, I thought did a great job of going out uh, and, and, and during the week, because we talked about it on Sunday uh, prior to the Elon game about how they were responsible not only for their emotions but getting our team's emotions in the right focus and the right path to go in to win the game. And then it was our players, our underclassmen's responsibility to play uh, as good as they could play for those upperclassmen, those seniors. So I think, uh, you know, it kind of it worked really well together Saturday. An individual indication of getting better each week, uh, week in and week out. Vad Lee today was named the Offensive Player of the Week in the Colonial Athletic Association. His third such award this season. All of them have come in the second half of the year. 23 for 25. No other JMU quarterback in the history of the, of the program has been that uh, high efficiency in one particular game. Uh, again, he just continues to lead your, your club. Well, uh, again, he, he gets better each week, I think. And again, his, his ability to uh, feel more comfortable each week uh, in this offense and his, his uh, role as a leader I think is important. Uh, I just left bad about 
15, 20 minutes ago, he was in my office and we were just talking about the journey. And uh, his, uh, he talked about uh, having to come in and strip himself of all the things that people might think about him coming in and just trying to be a part of a team and just wanted to be a teammate. And uh, he said it, he brought himself down from, you know, where he was at Georgia Tech to uh, now he was just a part of the JMU football team and he wanted to build himself up and, and he's done that. I mean, he's a very humble young man and, and done a great job of handling a tough situation. The three games prior to the regular season finale, you were concerned, and not concerned, but we talked a lot about, I guess, the, the rushing game was not where you wanted it to be. Right. Uh, the burden was carried quite a bit by Juwan Latney, 100 yeah. yards in the first half. Did you run the football? Did you get it back to where the Dukes need to have it? Yeah, we, we ran the football effectively. I mean, I, I would have to say that if you look at the numbers, over 200-plus yards rushing, uh, I think it was 51 attempts. Uh, was, so we did a nice job of running football. And, and we did it against a stacked line. We, we did it against a group uh, that moved every, every snap up front, that played eight-man spacing uh, to stop the run uh, up front. And, and, and we had other opportunities to throw the ball down the field, and we didn't. We, we kept the run game on. And, you know, sometimes the run game looks ugly. Uh, and it's supposed to. It's supposed to look ugly. But uh, uh, when you have a running back that rushed for 100 yards in the first half and then another one rushed for 92 yards, uh, that's a pretty effective day. Was there an emphasis? You said that there were some opportunities maybe to, to get the ball downfield uh, through Vad's arm. Were th was there definitely an emphasis? Option one, let's rush the ball, and then if we need to, we're, we're going to toss the ball down the field a bit? Yeah, I, I think we went into the game with the mindset of that is, you know, we, we take the run game. We wanted to try to fit the run game. And again, knowing that we would get eight and nine man lines, uh, we wanted to fit the run. And, and uh, uh, our guys did a really good job. It didn't, again, it didn't look pretty all the time. And it's, and it's not going to look pretty all the time. But uh, I thought we did that. And then we took shots down the field and we felt like they were there. Uh, especially in the red zone. Well, I think we were nine for nine in the red zone with eight touchdowns. So uh, to me, that's, uh, that's a good day when you can get in the red zone and, and you can run the ball in, you can throw the ball and be effective. Did yield just the one touchdown in the first uh, 30 minutes of the ball game. So almost uh, another shutout and a half for, right. for the defense. Overall defensively, are the Dukes better now than where they were just a couple of weeks ago? Well, I think we're improving. I think we're, I, I do think we are better, Kurt. I think we're improving. I think we have a we're growing in our knowledge of our scheme and system and how you know the standards of that scheme and system. So, you know, uh, we just have to continue to get better. Again, playing a lot of young players on that side of the football, uh, uh, it's important for us to to continue to grow. That's why you know I, I, you know the playoffs are important. And you want to go win. The, you want to go win it all. You want to go do that. But the opportunity to have more practices, boy, just you know, uh, huge for our for our program. Seeking consistency uh, in every aspect of the game against Richmond. You mentioned you were pleased with a kicking game. What about this weekend's kicking game? Got a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I thought we played well in the kicking game. I thought we did some good things. There were some things you like to do better. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we won the effective field position in, in kickoff. Uh, we did not win it in punt, but we expected to. We did not try to field many of their punts. They were kicking uh, uh, rugby punts, and we didn't want to try to. We wanted to try to go after the punts, and we did block a, block a punt. Jimmy Moreland blocked his fifth punt, uh, and Jimmy was rookie of the, uh, the week. So uh, uh, we did some things really good. I think our kickoff coverage has gotten better each week, and, and, and uh, we want to continue to enhance that and make that better. There are a lot of teams not playing in the country now in the FCS. Right. Uh, many of those coaches out on the road recruiting, and certainly being in the playoffs has to be an advantage in the recruiting world, you would think. But it does, does it not change, uh, or, or how do you find the time to develop those relationships with those recruits when you're also putting in a lot of time to still try to win ball games? Well, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on the phone and on Twitter and everything else with recruits, so uh, we, we, that data won't change. Uh, Probably around eight o'clock, nine o'clock tonight, there'll be there'll be uh, eight, nine coaches with phones stuck in my ear trying to talk to kids and and uh, uh, for our weekly conversations with them. So uh, you know, it's, it always helps recruiting. Recruiting is good when you're winning. You know, you don't have to make up stuff. You know, and and you know, I've been around those programs that uh, when you're not winning, you're making up stuff to keep guys interested. When you're winning, you know, kids usually want to go somewhere where teams are winning. 
All right, very good. Let's turn it over to other members of the media as we're here with our weekly fan and press luncheon, continuing into the postseason here at O'Neill's Grill. Gentlemen? Coach, you were able to go deep, uh, getting a lot of guys in. You played three quarterbacks. Talk about the philosophy of why you got that third quarterback in the rotation Saturday. Well, you know, when we come out of, uh, of this year and start in our offseason, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a big competition for our two spot. Uh, and we wanted to get those guys some game reps. They've been getting reps in practice, but we wanted to make sure we got uh, uh, Daniel Sheely and Brian Shore reps in the game. And, and again, that's you know one of the things we wanted to get done. Uh, they both have worked tremendously hard. They both are valuable to our football program. And uh, you know we also have one committed. So uh, we, we want to find out where we're going to be uh, when we start in the spring, uh, where we're going to be with our depth at quarterback. Talk a little about the having a home game. How important is that? Uh, is, it, is it a big, a big advantage? Or? Well, I think it's always important. And, and I, will, I will say this. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we need our students and our fans back. I think we're going to have uh, 2,500 uh, uh, blackout in Bridgeforth jerseys, uh, shirts available for the first 2,500 students uh, on Saturday for free. So, you know, it's free take three, I guess. Uh, uh, we're going to have them for our, for our kids to come back. Hopefully they'll come back early and support us and be in the stands. That's going to be big for the community, uh, obviously for the state of Virginia. you got two schools in the state of Virginia playing in an in a FCS playoff game. I think that's huge. And uh, that stadium should be really, really you know, loud. And we're going to need them to be loud. Uh, blackout and bridge for us, that's a pretty good deal. Just, uh, talk about how important it is when you're in the playoffs to get those extra practices in, kind of to build on for next year. Say that one more time. How, how important is it to kind of get some of these extra practices in to build on for next year? Yeah, being in the well, it's, it's real important. Like I said earlier, uh, anytime you can get, we're going to go out this afternoon and we're going to practice. We call it a plus one practice uh, since, you know, there's no school, so there's no 20-hour rule. So we can go out and practice. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a lot of our young guys and go out there and get some extra work. It's, it's just like getting a, uh, a few extra days of spring practice for those guys. So that's important to build and grow your program is to use uh, the playoff weeks, uh, especially this week with no school and Thanksgiving, to get some extra work for those young guys. Health-wise, how do you generally, how are you guys? Health, I think we're wise. pretty good. I mean, at this time of year, everybody's beat up. We've got a couple guys that, uh, you know, we'll find out probably tomorrow and, uh, or Wednesday whether or not they can play. Gage steals one with uh, uh, a concussion. We'll find out a little bit about him. Uh, we'll find out a little bit about uh, uh, Justin Wellens. Those are the two main guys. Everybody else we feel like. I think John Miller will be ready to go. I think Simeon Robinson will be ready to go. So, you know, we'll, be, we'll find out a little bit more. Talk about the last 24 hours. I know Sunday's normally a work day for you guys, yeah. but it was a little different yesterday having to find out who you played and scrambling to get information. Talk about what the last 24 hours has been like for you as a coaching staff. Well, to be honest with you, uh, we tried to keep it as normal as possible. I mean, obviously we had the selection show yesterday, and that was big. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we did that at 11. That was big for our, for our fans and, and uh, for our kids. We wanted them to have, uh, you know, uh, some excitement about uh, where they were going to play, who they were going to play. Uh, that was big. We, you know, as coaches, we pretty much had the film available and up and running to who we knew we were going to play, you know, once we found out. Uh, so we had been working on that. And, uh, um, you know, you have to do that. I mean, you can't wait till today and start preparing for, for a team. So uh, we've been, you know, ahead of the game. And then last night we did our normal deal. We just we went out to practice and, uh, um, and got ready for uh, our next opponent. Talk a little bit about Liberty. What do you kind of know at this point about them? And uh, I know Turner Gill is going to do a great job. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's done a great job wherever he's been uh, with, the, with, the, with the situation in hand. Uh, he had a tough situation at Kansas, uh, uh, but I think he, he handled it as, as, as professionally as you can. Uh, he's done a great job in, I think, three years at Liberty. Uh, unbelievable job there. I know they're going to be well coached. I know they're going to want to run the football. I know uh, uh, Coach Wembley, who runs their defense, uh, you know, he's a guy that we've always had contact in. They're going to be good on defense. So uh, it's going to be a good game because I think they're going to be well coached. They're going to be physical. They're going to be aggressive. And, <laughs> 
And again, that's what you expect when you get in this, uh, you know, 24 team pool this time of year. If you take a step back, can you see some similarities between you and Turner coming from that level and kind of dropping down to, to FCS? Do you see that at all? I haven't really thought about it that way, to be honest with you. I mean, I just know he's a talented coach, whether it's FBS or FCS. I don't really count coaches in FBS or FCS. Okay. Good coaches are good coaches. Gotcha. And, and program-wise, I know they've they've kind of looked into FBS, and JMU obviously has done the same study. Is there similarities that way? It's kind of a match up that, that? I have no idea what they've done to look at FBS. I know there were Elon didn't commit any penalties on on Saturday, right? And, and Liberty is a, a team that doesn't commit yeah. penalty. It's something that you battled all year. Focus issues. How are you addressing that going in now that it's a lose and go home situation? Yeah, uh, you know the penalty situation. Elon was one of those penalties. They haven't created many penalties or had any penalties all year long. Many all year long. So uh, they've done a really good job of that. Uh, it's one focus that we will we will obviously. Uh, take this off season and work on a, a lot. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, some of the best teams in our league are, 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 you know, high in penalties, if you look at it. And I've looked at that, too, and I've wondered about that. So uh, I'm sure some other coaches have some issues on that, too. So we'll take a look at it in our off season. We're going to continue to work like we've been working. Do you imagine Liberty would be pretty jacked up with their, this being their first playoff appearance and a fan base and the team in general would be pretty excited for this game? I imagine if uh, – you know, if they're going to play in-state and an in-state, another in-state team, they'd be pretty excited, uh, probably just like we're going to be really excited. And, and getting back into the playoffs, having been there since 2011, is this kind of back where JMU should be in your mind, back in the playoffs, pretty much a regular thing? There's a lot of resources here. Uh, there's a lot of fan uh, excitement at this school about football uh, and athletics in general. And uh, I think uh, this is a place that JMU should, should visit a lot, the playoffs. Uh, again, you have to build a foundation. So uh, how do you build that foundation? You go back and you work hard and you recruit hard. And you get good players that fit your culture. And that's what we're trying to do. Hopefully that's uh, somewhere we'll stay. I mean, you know, there's nothing's, nothing's ever guaranteed to you. Was that part of the appeal of this job with it, the resources in place where you could kind of have success quickly like this? Uh, it would be the appeal of any coach looking for a job, a uh, head coaching job, to go somewhere that's got a chance. But, but they had been down, and then you can kind of turn them around pretty quickly. Is that, was, is that easier at a place like this? You know, I don't know, I don't know about down. I mean, they they've, yeah. you know, have some pretty oh, yeah. successful years here. And obviously won a national championship. And right. uh, it's got a pretty rich history starting back with Coach Mack. So. Talk about Dean Marlowe's game on Saturday, two interceptions after being – Ejected a couple of times and missing yeah. some some uh, some downs this year. How how gratifying as a coach was that for you to see him step up big on his senior day? Well, I, you know, you like a guy that's uh, you know a really talented football player that hadn't had many positive plays. I'm talking about chunk plays, you know, interceptions, those type things, and he's had some things go wrong for him this year. You like for his senior day to go well, and and it did for Dean, and that was kind of neat for. For him, I got on him on the sideline after his uh, first interception about, uh, you know, a really good defensive back would have scored on that and, uh, you know, not run into somebody on the sideline. So uh, I've been joking with him the last couple of days about that. So, but no, I was, I was really happy for him. Is there anything in particular you feel like you guys need to work on this week going into the game? Or? You know, just working on uh, getting better fundamentally, uh, you know, protecting the quarterback, uh, running the football, stopping the run, those things that are going to be important as you go through the playoffs. We just want to work on the things that we work on every day in practice. From the beginning of the season, you've, you've used the term journey a lot. Yep. And in talking to your coaches, they use the same verbiage. Talking to your players, they use the same verbiage. Now, I've been around a lot of football teams, and I've never seen a team quite as unified as this. You as a coach, compare this to some of your other teams of how in line this team has fallen with the, the mindset you're trying to put in place here. Well, you know, I, I've had the opportunity the last two, uh, two jobs previously to work for head coaches that uh, preached, uh, you know, the one family, one vo voice, one focus kind of mindset. And uh, – you know, Butch Davis was that way for us at North Carolina. We were, we all said the same things. Uh, and then Urban Meyer is, I mean, if anybody knows anything about Coach Meyer, that, that, that's, that's the philosophy is, uh, you know, you speak the same language uh, through your team, through your coaching staff, through your players, through your janitor, through your, you know, through your secretaries, through everybody. And uh, 
we wanted to do that so there was no, you know, there's no agendas. There's no agendas in our building. There, there's no guy that's bigger than, than the next guy. Everybody's kind of a part of a team. And, and, and when you work well as a team, usually that's how it is. People are focused in one direction. Looking at their quarterback situation, and I know that one guy's injured, uh, what do you make of that, and, and how are you kind of preparing? For I've just really just started looking at their, their offense. I've been looking at their special teams and defense. And I, I know they've had a guy play quarterback that started the last two weeks. And, yeah. you know, he looks pretty talented. He looks like he's athletic. You didn't, you didn't see any drop off, just initial view of them? With I, them? Not from what I've seen in the last three ball games I've looked at. OK. Um, and looking at their running back, I know he's averaging almost 100 a game. Yeah. Um, Initial impressions of that guy, DJ Abnar, I think his name is. He's a, he's a talented running back. They have a, an offensive line that's physical, and I think that's a product of what they want to do in their offense. So they want to run the football and be physical and run the football. Yeah, and just briefly, because I know you're just getting into it, but they, they only run 65 plays a game. Is that, yeah. a, is that a slow it down? Is that Are they going to be a kind of control the pace kind of team against you guys? I, you know, they've done it differently. Last week, I think they tried to run fast at times. Okay. So they've done it differently each week. And again, going looking at your offense, as, as you guys play more games, nobody's really been able to slow you down as more film has got out there on bad and everything. Is that a testament to you guys kind of adapting and kind of staying ahead of teams? Well, I mean, we, we haven't done a whole lot different than we've done uh, since the middle of the year. I mean, we've run the ball the same way. We, we throw the same route concepts. Uh, you know, I think I, I give credit to, again, the, the players on our offensive uh, side of football and our offensive staff for, you know, maybe formationally doing some things that are, that are different. I, you know, it's hard when you're playing a team that goes fast. As a defensive coach, and I know it, when a team that goes fast, it really becomes difficult for somebody to be elaborate in the game plan. Uh, you almost have to, you know, line up and play and, and – uh, uh, that's that's a stress on the defense. I mean, you're not going to stop it. So, uh, you know, you hope that they make some mistakes. And, and knock on wood, we have it. Anything else, gentlemen? Nope. Okay. So the Dukes will be at home taking on the Flames of Liberty University on Saturday. Kickoff will be at 4 o'clock. A little additional information for you. The game will be uh, telecast on ESPN3. There will be no Matazon coverage of the ball game on uh, the video web stream. So go to espn uh, three and uh, also for the ticket situation go to jmusports.com you can also call the ticket office at 540-568 duke that's 540-568-3853 and as coach withers mentioned uh, first 2500 students will receive those black t-shirts and uh, tickets are, can also be purchased by going online to jmusports.com 24 7 Student tickets are free. Uh, then the ticket price range will be from $12 at the end zones. Uh, you'll have $20 reserve seat, 35 chair back seats, and for the Bridgeport Stadium club, room, uh, club seats, those will be $100. Again, you can go online right now at jmusports.com to get all of those tickets. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully we'll be back again next Monday as the Dukes face the Flames on Saturday at 4 at Bridgeport Stadium. That's all today from O'Neill's Grill on University Boulevard.